So in the morning session, we have three talks. To start off, we have Mikhail Shapovnikov from EPFL, who will be talking about spontaneous versus explicit breaking of scale invariants. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, organizers for uh, making such an interesting meeting and uh, inviting me here, and giving me uh, an opportunity to talk about uh, uh, scale invariance. So let me start uh, from uh, motivation uh, uh, for the study. Uh, so the first part of it, uh, comes from uh, particle physics. So the standard model is uh, now complete. Uh, uh, the uh, last particle, BH boson, has been uh, already found. Uh, at the same time, uh, no significant deviations from the standard model uh, were observed. And moreover, uh, the masses of the top work and of the BH boson the nature has chosen make the standard model a self-consistent effective field theory all the way to the very high uh, scale, uh, possibly a quantum gravity scale implant. So the theory is uh, mathematically consistent and uh, doesn't lose predictability up to uh, very high uh, energies. And you've already seen uh, this type of uh, plot at John uh, talk where here you have the uh, uh, scalar boson mass. Uh, here you have mass of the top quark. Uh, there is some regions on this plane, stability, metastability, and we happen to be uh, very close to uh, the uh, transition from metastability or stability, though given the precision of uh, contemporary experimental data, we don't know we are. We can live very well in the stable vacuum or uh, somewhat uh, metastable vacuum. The question arises how to reconcile all this uh, with the evidence for new physics. Uh, we have plenty. Uh, First of all, uh, we have observation of neutrino masses and oscillations, and in the canonical standard model, the neutrinos are massless and do not oscillate. We have evidence for dark matter. The standard model doesn't have any dark matter particle. Uh, standard model cannot explain baryon asymmetry uh, of the universe. Uh, cosmological inflation is absent in the canonical variant of the standard model, and acceleration, expansion, accelerating expansion of the universe, though can be explained with cosmological constant, this explanation is not, uh, so to say, uh, very convincing. Uh, in addition to these uh, problems which we face uh, from experimental side, we have uh, a number of uh, uh, theoretical prejudice, or uh, I would call them as why questions. Why a cosmological constant is so small? Uh, why the W mass is so small uh, in comparison with the Planck scale? Uh, why uh, the BEH boson mass is stable against radiative corrections, strong CP problem, Fermi's mat mass matrix, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So all that uh, clearly call for uh, some uh, extension of the standard model. Well, another part of uh, uh, motivation uh, uh, for that uh, was coming basically from uh, the media. Uh, the coverage of uh, gold particle BH boson. Unfortunately, uh, I never uh, met Robert Brown, though I hoped to uh, met him when I was in uh, Belgium at uh, the university back in 2008, and that was exactly the time when uh, LHC uh, was about to start. And uh, the media, of course, were uh, uh, description of um, uh, particle de Dieu. Uh, BH boson, uh, that's a nice photo of uh, uh, Robert Brown and Francois Englert, uh, extraction from uh, the Belgian newspaper. Uh, uh, you can find, uh, of course, uh, the uh, British analog uh, uh, of that. Uh, and uh, what a little bit bothered me is that uh, uh, when you read that, you say that, uh, okay, the Higgs boson, BH boson, that gives uh, all uh, matter uh, its mass. Okay, it's uh, clear that uh, the journalists, uh, they somewhat exaggerated. 
uh, it's true that uh, BH boson gives uh, mass to WZ, uh, quarks, and leptons. However, uh, there are questions. Uh, who gives mass to the BEH boson itself? Uh, who gives mass uh, to the proton? Uh, who determines the Newtonian gravity constant? So we're going over uh, other uh, massive parameters which we have uh, in the standard model. And uh, this is going to lead me to discussion of uh, uh, scale invariance. Okay, so I will uh, talk a little bit about scale invariance, conformal anomaly, uh, different models, exact quantum scale invariance, naturalness, and quantum scale invariance, some uh, uh, minimal models which uh, uh, are scale invariant, and then I come to uh, conclusions. Okay, so what scale invariance? So what is scale invariance? Uh, so geometrically, uh, this is just uh, uh, change in the scales, okay? You uh, start, say, from a square, and then you scratch all the scales equally in all possible directions, and uh, that gives you a scale transformation. There is somewhat more uh, complicated transformation, which is uh, conformal, uh, which does that in not a uniform way, in somewhat more complicated way, but uh, it keeps uh, uh, the angles between uh, different uh, straight lines. So that's a geometric picture, and now if we uh, come back to uh, particle physics, uh, with the standard model, uh, then we observe the following. If you take the standard model and uh, put uh, the BEH boson mass uh, to zero, then the Lagrangian has a wider symmetry. This Lagrangian is uh, scale and uh, conformally invariant. Okay, so I will be mostly talking about uh, scale uh, transformations here. So dilatations, uh, quantum field theory language, they are doing the, the following transformation. You take an uh, arbitrary field psi, and then uh, you rescale coordinates, and then you rescale the field, and uh, the exponent here is what is known as canonical mass dimension of uh, uh, the quantum field. Okay, so uh, that's an interesting uh, symmetry. In particular, it's interesting from the point of view of uh, hierarchy problem. Okay, as we said, the uh, BEH uh, boson mass is small in comparison with the Planck scale, and now we put it to zero and we get uh, an extra symmetry. Uh, and so it's tempting uh, to use uh, this symmetry to try to understand this fact. Other uh, attractive features of scale invariant conformal theories are that there are uh, no mass parameters uh, whatsoever. We have only dimensionless coupling, and if we have only dimensionless coupling, that uh, gives a hope that uh, the behavior, UV behavior, ultraviolet behavior of these theories at high energies uh, may be smooth, and so maybe we eventually get uh, something, uh, or maybe not necessarily a normalizable theory, but theory in which uh, uh, is still predictive and uh, can uh, describe uh, very high energy uh, physics. Well, uh, this discussion it was at the classical level. Okay, we take the standard model. Uh, no quantum corrections, but uh, what about uh, quantum corrections? We have to uh, make renormalization. And uh, so I'm coming to conformal anomaly. Common law is uh, that quantum scale invariance uh, doesn't exist. Because uh, if you construct uh, divergence of uh, the dilatational current, construct the current which is associated with the scale symmetry, and uh, compute the divergence, we find an anomaly. And so, for instance, if you talk about QCD, uh, then uh, the divergence of dilatational current is proportional to the beta function times uh, g squared, uh, the strength of uh, the uh, gluon <laughs> field strain. Okay, and uh, so Coleman uh, expressed that uh, in the following way, and this is uh, related to quadratic divergences. That uh, for scale invariance, he was talking about uh, whether you can have uh, uh, theory which is scale invariant. For scale invariant, the situation is hopeless. Any cutoff procedure necessarily involves a large mass, and the large mass necessarily breaks uh, scale invariance in a large way. Okay, so it looks like that uh, this symmetry is kind of useless, at least for uh, uh, hierarchy problem. 
looks like this is a no go theorem, but uh, the situation is in fact uh, uh, somewhat more subtle. So first, uh, the statement that any cutoff precision necessarily involves a large mass is not true. Okay, so a counterexample is uh, dimensional regularization in which uh, 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 there is no cutoff, uh, there is a scale which is not UV, uh, which is small, okay? And uh, uh, this normalization point uh, is not sent to infinity, okay? So there is no large uh, 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 breaking of scale invariance. Uh, still, uh, the scale invariance is anomalous uh, due to dimensional transmutation. Uh, the RG running of parameters leads to non-vanishing trace of energy momentum tensor, which enters the divergence <laughs> of um, uh, the scale color. Okay, so uh, the physical quantities depend on uh, this scale only uh, logarithmically, and uh, so any uh, quadratic contribution to uh, BH mass are just purely technically uh, technical and are induced by explicit breaking of conformal invariance by regulators, unless there is new physics at some uh, high energy scale. Okay, and uh, so this uh, uh, understanding uh, leads uh, people to uh, investigate uh, the following direction. Suppose that uh, we start from a theory which is uh, scale invariant at uh, uh, the classical level. Uh, we renormalize it gently, a la Tuft uh, and Weltman, and then uh, the breaking of scale invariance is induced uh, by radiative corrections. Uh, well, the first paper on that was by Coleman and Weinberg, and then uh, many researchers uh, were uh, studying this uh, direction over uh, the last 40 years. Uh, so the, the question is, okay, let's take a standard model and let's see if uh, uh, it can be make scale invariant at the classical level and then uh, it leads to the breaking of uh, it uh, at the quantum level inducing the mass of BH, balls and electronic symmetry breaking, et cetera, et cetera. It happened that it doesn't work on the standard model. Okay, it, uh, it could have worked for the standard model, but it doesn't work for the standard model if uh, you choose uh, uh, the parameters given by experiment. So basically, uh, the mass of the top work is too heavy. Okay, for lighter uh, top mass, it would work. For the top mass, uh, 173 GeV, very heavy, it doesn't work. You cannot make a uh, Coleman-Weinberg uh, mechanism to work, but uh, still, uh, the idea is, uh, look uh, to be quite attractive, and uh, the question is maybe we can uh, construct uh, a model in which all this works. Okay, so this can be done uh, by enlarging the standard model, maybe by extra gauge bosons, extra fermions, extra scalars, and there are quite many uh, different theories in which uh, uh, everything can be uh, satisfied. Uh, I just mentioned the uh, minimal one uh, invented by uh, this group of people. So you take the standard model uh, and you introduce a very small number of fields, as small as possible. Uh, and what is required is uh, the standard model plus uh, two scalar singlets, and one of them with non-zero uh, vacuum expectation value. So no extra uh, uh, fields, okay? And so in this way, you get a theory which can be valid up to the Planck scale. Uh, no vacuum instability, no Landau poles, uh, Coleman-Weinberg type of uh, uh, symmetry breaking. And uh, yeah, that's an interesting theory. Uh, now I want to, to come back. Now, so is it really a no-go theorem that uh, we cannot uh, have an exact uh, scale invariance? There is exact scale invariance, which is something which uh, should be abundant in uh, particle physics. Well, at first sight, uh, the answer is uh, yes, because uh, uh, we do observe uh, different scales in nature, okay? And uh, so exact scale invariance uh, doesn't work, obviously. But uh, 
since we are here at the conference on so spontaneous symmetry breaking, uh, we know that there is yet another way to uh, keep uh, the symmetry intact, uh, but still uh, change uh, the uh, ground state, okay? And so that leads me uh, to the statement that if uh, exact case, uh, scale invariance exists exist in nature, then it uh, must be uh, spontaneously broken. And uh, now I uh, going to show you how in principle uh, it, would, it may work. And let me start uh, from this, uh, from some toy model, uh, which though shows uh, all essential features uh, of this construction. Okay, so let's take a theory of uh, two scalar fields. Uh, one of them high, I will be calling uh, Dilaton, and H, it will be uh, BH boson. So this theory uh, is required to be scale invariant, and uh, so this is just kinetic term, and for uh, the potential term, uh, I'm going to write the most general uh, quartic uh, polynomial. Okay, and it's, uh, there are three constants which uh, parameterize it, lambda, alpha, and uh, beta. And now, uh, let's see uh, when we can achieve uh, spontaneous breaking of uh, scale invariance. And the situation is actually quite peculiar and uh, pretty much different from what uh, we would get with the internal symmetries. Uh, if you take, uh, so uh, let's take lambda positive, okay, positive constant. Uh, let's take beta positive, then you see that uh, this polynomial has a uh, unique uh, vacuum state. So in this uh, vacuum state, the, uh, mm, uh, there are no particles. Okay, why so? Because uh, the theory is uh, uh, scale invariant, and uh, once the theory is scale invariant, it is either free or it doesn't contain particles. It just contains the conformal waves. Okay. Uh, if uh, you take beta smaller than zero, uh, then the vacuum of this uh, theory is unstable and there is nothing to talk about. Okay. And uh, I remind you that there was uh, a similar discussion of Elitzer earlier uh, this week. And if you take uh, this uh, beta to be equal to zero, then the theory acquires a flat direction <coughs> and along this flat direction, uh, the uh, high field is not equal to zero, and therefore another scalar is also having non-zero uh, vacuum expectation value. I will be coming uh, then uh, later to phenomenology, and so this parameter alpha, uh, which stands here, uh, it will be very, very small. Uh, high will be related to the Planck scale, and this will be related to electroweak uh, uh, symmetry break. So this picture shows uh, that uh, the uh, requirement of breaking of scale invariance is something extremely peculiar. And, very, uh, and this is uh, the place where it's very uh, much different from uh, the uh, internal symmetries. So if you take uh, the theory with the uh, uh, U1 uh, symmetry, uh, this is the potential. Uh, if uh, uh, the mass square is greater than zero, you get a unique state. The symmetry is just uh, you go around the circle here. Now, if you take m equal to zero, then uh, you get uh, the whole domain in which uh, uh, the uh, field has non-zero web, which corresponds to, uh, to this circle. So here, uh, for scale symmetry, it's not like that. Uh, beta greater than zero, this is the potential, this is the unique point, and uh, the symmetry acts along, along these lines, okay? So you go from here to there. Okay, the energy changes as well when you act symmetry because it's not an internal symmetry. Uh, beta smaller than zero, you get a kind of saddle point. And uh, when beta is equal to zero, you get a flat direction, which you hardly notice here. There is, a straight, uh, there is some line along which uh, uh, both fields are not equal to zero, and their energy is uh, equal to zero. And the energy along uh, this direction doesn't depend on the uh, uh, amplitude of the field. And that's what Eliezer already mentioned. Okay, so that was a, a picture at uh, the uh, 
classical level. And since I mentioned already uh, quantum correction, uh, the question uh, arises, uh, what is going to happen with all that uh, when uh, we include the, uh, uh, the quantum corrections? And so this uh, uh, I'm going to exemplify at uh, the, uh, using <coughs> Uh, minimal subtraction scheme of tooth and development. Uh, so reminder of uh, the origin of uh, uh, conformal anomaly. You go to the space which uh, is, uh, has dimensionality uh, different from four, and once you do so, uh, the theory which only contained uh, dimensionless coupling start to contain dimensional full coupling. And to mismatch, uh, uh, the uh, dimensions, what you do, uh, you introduce uh, dimensional full parameter mu with some power which eventually goes to zero when uh, n goes to four. And uh, uh, it is uh, this parameter which explicitly breaks the uh, conformal and scaled symmetry in uh, uh, the space of uh, n minus two uh, epsilon dimensions. So first side, uh, this is harmless because there is uh, small power here, but in fact it's not because there are divergences, there are one over epsilon terms, and uh, this breaking uh, propagates to uh, the renormalized uh, quantity. And if you do the standard computation, you find that uh, the flat direction I was talking about is uh, changing, it's get a slope, and so the dilaton, which was uh, absolutely massless, at uh, the classical level acquires uh, a mass due to uh, radiative corrections. So that's uh, the standard uh, uh, reasoning. And uh, the question arises, can we bypass uh, uh, this logic? And the answer is yes. And actually, uh, this answer is uh, coming from uh, uh, work by uh, Engler and uh, collaborators back uh, in 76. And uh, the idea is the following. Uh, once uh, we go to uh, n minus two epsilon dimensions, in fact, we do have at hands uh, quite a number of dimensional full parameters, okay? And these parameters are just fields, okay? And therefore, if uh, uh, this parameter mu, which uh, uh, used to be a constant, is uh, replaced by some combination of uh, the fields, then uh, the effective action which you construct is going to be a scale invariant. Okay, and if you repeat uh, this procedure, order in order in uh, perturbation theory, then uh, nothing is going to change. So this is uh, a result which is uh, valid in uh, all orders of uh, uh, perturbation theory. Okay, uh, there is a less trivial statement which can be also proven that uh, all uh, counter terms can be organized in such a way that they're not only a scale uh, invariant but uh, they're also uh, conformally uh, invariant in all orders of perturbation th theory. So what is the uh, uh, point, okay? So why, uh, from one hand side, uh, we have conformal anomaly, uh, and here there is an explicit uh, uh, construction when we don't, okay? And uh, uh, the key point here is uh, renormalizability, okay? If you require the theory to be renormalizable, uh, this construction doesn't work, okay? It breaks uh, renormalizability uh, of the theory. So here you have to introduce uh, an infinite number of uh, uh, new terms uh, which are constructed in such a way the theory is scale invariant or conformal invariant, but uh, these are terms which are new uh, to uh, Lagrangian, which uh, didn't exist there before. Is it a drawback? Not really. Why so? Because uh, you can analyze uh, theory and see that uh, all these uh, counter terms are suppressed by a dimensional full parameter, which is uh, a vacuum expectation value of uh, the dilaton field. And if you say that uh, the dilaton is associated with gravity and uh, its value is uh, very, very large, then uh, this means that uh, energies which are much smaller than the, uh, than the Planck scale are uh, 
you have uh, a theory which is uh, predictable and it's on the same level as any other type of uh, effective field theory. Though uh, for effective field theory, you write everything uh, uh, which is consistent with symmetries. So here you also write everything which is consistent with symmetries, including scale invariance. Uh, Okay, so uh, one can say, well, but uh, after all, we know that uh, different constants run. The uh, strong coupling constant run and all other constants run. How uh, this is consistent with the, the statement that there is no anomaly. Uh, a very simple computation shows that uh, if you consider the energy domain, uh, which is much smaller than the Dilaton wave, then you reproduce the running of all uh, coupling constant. There is no surprise, okay? There is spontaneous breaking of uh, conformal uh, uh, symmetry, and only at the energies, which are potentially much, much larger than this number, we will see uh, the uh, conformal behavior. So why uh, this all is uh, uh, relevant to the uh, hierarchy problem in, um, in our toy model? So let's look at uh, uh, this theory. So this uh, parameter beta, uh, which is actually uh, related to cosmological constant, uh, we take very small, minus zero, dimensional less parameter. Uh, the parameter alpha, which uh, is uh, uh, associated eventually with the scale of electroweak uh, symmetry breaking is also taken to be very small. And therefore, uh, if you look at uh, the theory in the limit when alpha and beta are equal to zero, you see that there is a uh, new symmetry in addition to the scale invariance. And this is just a shift symmetry. You can shift uh, the dilaton field by arbitrary amount. Okay, that's a new symmetry, and uh, you can check uh, that renormalization of parameter alpha is proportional to the alpha itself, okay? And uh, so uh, there are no large uh, uh, perturbative corrections to the uh, BH boson mass. Those which are proportional to this very large number contain necessarily small parameters alpha and beta, and those which are proportional to large parameter lambda uh, BH boson self-coupling, they can only contain log of uh, uh, the vacuum expectation value. Okay, so uh, this addresses uh, the question of stability of uh, the BH mass against radiative corrections. There is no explanation why these parameters are small, but uh, this is technically uh, natural. And there is an important point uh, in this consideration. If uh, uh, this is not just a standard model. If, there, if we have something else, if we have uh, some uh, other fields which are uh, scale invariant, but which are getting their masses from the interaction with the dilaton field, then this discussion fails down. Okay, so once you have uh, a heavy particle which uh, has a strong enough interaction with the dilaton field and strong enough enough uh, interaction with the BH uh, boson, then this pole is an argument, and the mass of BH boson is driven up uh, to a high energy scale. And so the conjecture is uh, that uh, the natural theory shouldn't have heavy particles between the Fermi and the Planck scale in order to have uh, BH uh, hierarchy uh, intact. Now, uh, this was discussion which was not touching gravity, and clearly the gravity uh, must be included, and uh, the question is whether we can add the gravity in a, a scale invariant way, and whether uh, the addition of gravity uh, changes uh, the argument which I uh, presented. So how you include gravity? Okay, very simple. Uh, you introduce uh, non-minimal coupling of uh, uh, the dilaton field to R, and uh, uh, you introduce a non-minimal coupling of H to R. Okay, and I'm not introducing any terms like Tuft was uh, uh, discussing, uh, since they introduce other degrees of freedom. So if we keep that, we don't increase uh, any uh, number of degrees of freedom. So once we look here, we say, aha, well, presumably the uh, BH hierarchy 
uh, will be broken. Why so? Because uh, this term, it breaks uh, the shift invariance. So if you change high to high plus uh, some number, uh, then uh, that is not respected uh, by this term. But you can check that uh, this doesn't lead to any large corrections. And the reason being is that uh, uh, what high square is, is a uh, coefficient in front of kinetic term for uh, the graviton. Okay, and since uh, graviton stays massless in any constant scalar background, then perturbative computation of gravitational contributions to BH mass produce only uh, corrections inversely proportional <coughs> to the uh, Planck scale. Okay, so the, the consequence of this picture are that the theory is natural in perturbative sense. Uh, BH mass is stable against radiative correction. Dilaton is massless in all orders of uh, uh, perturbation theory. Uh, here, the very important point comes. Since uh, this is uh, a field which is massless in all orders of perturbation theory, it may be dangerous for uh, cosmology, okay? But it's not. And the reason is exactly uh, Goldstone theorem. The Particle, phi, only has uh, derivative couplings to everything else. And therefore, it doesn't, it doesn't induce one over R uh, forces, and so it escapes all uh, tests uh, uh, which were done on gravity with respect to uh, the fifth fourth. Okay, so, of course, uh, uh, many things which uh, I said here uh, are quite speculative. And uh, it's not clear at all uh, what happens beyond the perturbation theory. I have absolutely no answer what uh, selects uh, this parameter beta equal to zero, which is needed to have uh, uh, spontaneous breaking of um, uh, scale invariance. And uh, the high energy behavior, what happens at energies larger than the dilaton uh, uh, field remains absolutely obscure. Uh, or to put in other words, uh, we don't know whether uh, this theory, in spite of uh, the fact that it has infinite number of arbitrariness uh, 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 related to high dimensional operators, whether it can have a, a scale invariant uh, UV completion. Okay, so uh, having said that, uh, I would like to see whether uh, one can construct uh, a, uh, a reasonable phenomenology uh, to uh, support these ideas and uh, whether uh, at least part of uh, uh, the questions which we have for the standard model uh, can be addressed uh, in uh, this uh, scale invariant uh, theories. So he, here is uh, the construction of, uh, uh, of the simplest model. So let's take the standard model. We have it. Uh, let's have graviton. Uh, we have it. Uh, let's have uh, dilaton. Uh, I explained why. And uh, three Majorana leptons. You will see in a second why uh, they will be needed. Uh, scale invariant Lagrangian. Uh, so standard model uh, plus gravity part, which I already discussed, uh, which uh, includes non-minimal coupling of uh, dilaton and BH uh, boson to R, uh, uh, the potential, which I already discussed. And uh, this is uh, uh, the part uh, associated with uh, Majorana neutrinos. Okay, there are uh, three of them. They have uh, coupling between uh, ordinary leptons, BH boson, and they also have uh, uh, Majorana uh, term. So if you take uh, uh, this uh, type of theory, this theory is very minimal, okay? It's, uh, in comparison with the standard model, it uh, just has uh, four uh, new particles, three right-handed neutrinos and the dilaton, and uh, uh, every particle uh, has many roles uh, in this theory. So the dilaton uh, determines the Planck mass, uh, gives mass to BH boson, gives mass to three Majoran leptons, may lead to dynamical dark energy, that's I'm not going to discuss. Uh, the role of uh, BH boson gives masses to fermions and vector bosons in the standard model provide inflation. Uh, cosmology and <coughs> phenomenology of 
uh, uh, of this theory. If you take uh, chaotic initial conditions for uh, the dilaton and for uh, H, as is done in chaotic <laughs> inflation, uh, then we will see that uh, the inflation is a natural uh, feature of this theory. Uh, the choice of parameters when non-minimal coupling of uh, uh, <coughs> the H field uh, to <coughs> gravity is large and uh, the dilaton uh, field to gravity is small, uh, leads to conclusion that uh, for arbitrary uh, chaotic initial condition, the BH field is more essential. Okay? And uh, in this case, uh, the dilaton field is frozen, and uh, what we get, uh, we get a Higgs inflation at very large uh, uh, values of uh, the scalar field, uh, the potential flattens uh, up, and uh, uh, the system uh, rolls down uh, towards uh, uh, h uh, uh, equal to zero, and uh, ex uh, this expansion leads to uh, uh, flat homogeneous and isotropic universe with uh, uh, small fluctuations needed for uh, structure formation. Okay, so this form of potential which I wrote here, uh, it depends on the standard model parameters, and uh, one can consider distinguish several uh, uh, cases. Uh, the case of uh, stable vacuum, metastable vacuum, almost uh, stable vacuum. So I'll skip uh, uh, this technical details here and just uh, uh, show you uh, uh, what we are, uh, what we have on uh, the face plane. Here is uh, top work Yukawa coupling, uh, which uh, uh, should be measured very well. Uh, this is uh, uh, the Higgs mass. This is the borderline between uh, stable and metastable vacuum. So uh, this is the uh, experimental point. Uh, there are different uncertainties associated in particular <coughs> with determination of top work Yukawa coupling. So we, we don't know where we are. Uh, this place corresponds to the stable vacuum. This is, okay, uh, metastable, and here we have uh, uh, degeneracy. So we have uh, uh, this form of potential if uh, we are uh, to the right of this line, okay? And if uh, uh, this is the case, uh, then uh, inflation, uh, Big Bang, all happen in the framework of uh, uh, the standard model. Okay, the first stage, uh, we have a normal inflation and uh, you can do a computation and find out uh, the prediction for an S uh, and an R. So that's the number which Slava computed some time ago. Uh, this is very uh, close to uh, Starobinsky inflation, and there are deep prisons uh, for that, so it works very well. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, since uh, this is a standard model, you can walk out the uh, reheating process completely because uh, you know how Higgs boson uh, interacts with other particles uh, of the standard model, and you find uh, that the universe is reheated up to a pretty high temperature of the order of uh, 10 to the 14 GeV. Uh, uh, there are modifications of uh, uh, this scenario depending on where we are at uh, the uh, phase place. Uh, there is uh, one very highly fine-tuned case in which uh, the top mass and the Higgs mass and the BH mass are uh, uh, tuned to some value plus some other parameters which uh, lead to uh, deviations from uh, canonical prediction. And uh, the Higgs inflation is also possible with the, the vacuum metastability up to certain assumptions about uh, UV completions, but uh, the critical indices happen to be the same as in uh, canonical Higgs inflation, 0.97 and 0 0.0003. So hopefully uh, we will be able to reach <laughs> this accuracy in the coming uh, 20 years or so. Uh, now, about uh, new physics, 
uh, as I said, uh, uh, we need uh, three uh, right-handed uh, neutrinos, three right-handed particles. And uh, they can also play many roles. Uh, so first of all, uh, once you have uh, uh, this uh, uh, Majorana states, you can explain all experiments in neutrino physics, okay? Basically, independently on the mass of these particles. The mass of these particles can be as large as 10 to the 10 GV, it works very well, or the mass of these particles can be as small as uh, KV, it also works very well. There is a uh, degeneracy there. But uh, in addition to that, uh, one of these particles can play a role of uh, uh, the dark matter, and then uh, it can be searched with the use of X-ray uh, telescopes, uh, searching for the decay uh, of these particles into gamma and uh, neutrino, and there were even uh, reported some evidence for that, so the, uh, but the question remains uh, highly controversial. Uh, the uh, other two, with mass uh, in MEVGV uh, region, so they give masses to neutrinos and uh, produce uh, uh, better on the symmetry of the universe, and they can be searched at uh, dedicated experiment, such as uh, uh, experiment which is discussed at CERT now, uh, ship uh, search for hidden uh, particles. So I'm coming to my uh, conclusions. Uh, so the exact uh, uh, scale invariance uh, leads to uh, spontaneously broken. It leads to unique uh, source for all masses. Uh, the BH uh, boson mass is stable against radiative corrections, uh, which is ensured by scale invariance itself and by the uh, shift symmetry. Uh, the massless sector of theory, in addition to Graviton and a photon contains a new massless particle, which uh, dilaton and which has also only uh, derivative couplings of uh, uh, matter. And uh, it also gives an answer uh, to the question where this new physics. Uh, we know already uh, an answer which was provided uh, by John that uh, new physics is uh, uh, around the corner. Uh, I would say that no, it's under the carpet because all observational drawbacks of the standard model can be uh, solved by new physics uh, below the Fermi scale. And of course, uh, there are plenty of problems along this way, uh, though the stability for electroweak uh, scale against corrections can be achieved. It's absolutely not clear why electroweak scale is so much smaller uh, than the Planck scale. It's absolutely not clear uh, why cosmological constant is so small, and uh, it's not clear uh, what uh, uh, would be a uh, high energy limit of uh, theories with uh, scale invariance, which is spontaneously broken. Thank you very much. Your dilaton is massless. Yes. So what happens with fifth force? There is no fifth force. Why? Why? Uh, uh, it uh, happens because of the following. Uh, I will provide. No, no. Uh, that's a very good uh, question, and that's a very uh, good point. Uh, if uh, uh, let's take uh, the theory, which is scale invariant and uh, which is, um, uh, which doesn't contain gravity, okay? And which uh, contains spontaneous uh, uh, breaking of scale gravities. Then uh, you will get a massless particle, uh, dilaton. Uh, it's massless because of Goldstone theorem, but uh, uh, this particle is going to transmit fifth force. It will. If you add gravity to the picture, then it's not going to, try to uh, lead to the fifth fall because of the following reason. Uh, you can make a combine, uh, the, the scale invariance uh, in the absence of gravity is not an internal symmetry, okay? And so uh, Goldstone theorem, it has uh, uh, two parts. One concerns the mass of the Goldstone boson and another concerns the way Goldstone boson interacts uh, with the other stuff. Now, 
once you add gravity, uh, the scale invariance is converted into internal symmetry because transformation of coordinates can be undone by uh, this transformation. And then the second uh, part of the Stone theorem start to play a role, which leads to the conclusion that this Goldstone field only has derivative couplings of matter with matter. And once it has derivative couplings of matter, that means that there is no one over R uh, potential induced. So it's a combination of uh, gravity and the requirement of spontaneous uh, symmetry. So it, it, uh, for me, it's kind of an, an amazing thing. If that uh, means that uh, uh, maybe a theory of gravity, we all think that it just contains two uh, graviton states that sit. Now here, uh, there is uh, an extra part uh, which can be associated with gravity, but which automatically happens to be harmless. I have a couple of, couple of questions. The first question is, uh, in front of R, so the, the scalar curvature, you had chi squared plus h squared. So chi squared plus h squared is m Planck squared. Yes. So h squared is m Planck squared minus chi squared. So h has to be 250 GeV squared. Yes. And Planck squared is 10 to the 19 GeV yes. squared. So chi squared has to be close to 10 to the 19 yes. to an extreme accuracy. Yes. Okay, so that's a fine tuning problem. Uh, it's not a fine-tuning problem because, uh, no, 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 this is not a fine-tuning problem. 10 to the 19 is uh, the choice of units. Uh, you, you choose whatever... Uh, so, so you have m Planck squared, you subtract from that chi squared, and you have to get something extremely small. No, 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 no. The point is that uh, this theory, it doesn't have any explicit scales whatsoever. No, right? I, I repeat, you, you, you write a term that is the scalar curvature. The right. coefficient of the scalar curvature is m Planck squared. Okay. The G new, uh, you know, one over G new. Yes. Okay. So H squared, H is the, the Higgs. Right. Okay. We know what the value of the Higgs is today. Sure. All right. So the value of the Higgs, 250 GeV squared, is m Planck squared, which is 10 to the 19 GeV squared, minus chi squared. So chi squared is to be extremely uh, precisely determined. No, 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 this is not a way to, to think about it. Okay, so how do we, what's the mistake in this thinking? Uh, it's a, uh, the theory is scale invariant. Whatever uh, point you take along the uh, flat direction, all these points are equivalent. And, uh, they yeah, but you have to choose it very precisely. Absolutely right? no. Okay. Any no? Uh, any point on this uh, line will give me the ten. Give, the, the ten will, will give you. All right. So that, that's one question. The other question: the derivative coupling. So there's a there is a scale under the derivative coupling. Is that the Planck scale? Yes. Okay. Well, then that's fine. And third question is the um, the um, Majorana uh, fermion that has a KeV. Yes. Is that a problem during Big Bang nucleosynthesis in terms of the number of radiation species? Uh, there are uh, several constraints. Uh, no. First of all, uh, there are no constraints from BBN coming from the number of uh, species because these are massive particles and they... But we, but we know the number of uh, radi uh, radiation species during BBN, right? It's three sure, point sure. something. So the, the, there is uh, a constraint coming from BBN, for yes, sure. And, right. uh, but this uh, constraint is coming not from the number of uh, states. There can be something coming from the number of states, but that's not uh, important, OK? The most important constraint is coming from decays of these particles. Since if they are long-lived, and if they have masses of the order of uh, 1 GeV, the uh, lifetime, if it's uh, long enough, uh, then it uh, can change the, 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 the decay and decay products and change the predictions of uh, BBM. Okay. I always thought that the rate of, of uh, the rate of expansion of the universe, which has to be radiation dominated, sure, sure, has sure. to have a coefficient of three point something. Yeah, yeah, Four yeah. is not. It's, it's yeah, but, but, but uh, during this, that period. Yeah, these particles are uh, enter into the thermal equilibrium there, and at time of uh, BBM. Uh, their contribution mm, to that uh -huh. uh, uh, is not very large. But uh, this is all has been worked out, and yes, uh, uh, there are constraints on uh, uh, the, the, the parameters on the theory, which are not very strong. Okay. So, so uh, I guess in addition to beta and alpha, which have to be chosen with particular values, you also acquire a very large value of this psi parameter. 
so do you have any you know, intuition or insight into that? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, the way I uh, consider this uh, problem uh, is the following. Uh, okay, we have a standard model which has 20 uh, something parameters, which of course uh, we would be uh, glad to get hints uh, on. But uh, unfortunately we don't. We take uh, these parameters from uh, experiment. And for me, this large parameter psi, 1,000, is yet another number, uh, another parameter of the standard model, which is taken from experiment. And this experiment, in this case, is a large scale observation of the universe. OK. Uh, I guess that's one approach. Uh, and then uh, you have the why is the eventual cosmological constant 0? Well, it isn't, right? Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, the eventual cosmological constant, as we know, well, maybe non-zero, OK? And uh, well, right now, it's non-zero. You could argue whether it's eventual or not. Yeah. Mm, yes. Mm, you don't know what it is. Uh, you can certainly uh, fit uh, uh, the present value of cosmological constant with this parameter beta, requiring it to be extremely small, OK? Small, uh, the self-coupling of Dilaton is exactly cosmological constant. But uh, why it uh, happened to be so, I have uh, no clue. Okay, let's thank the speaker once again. And one minute.